My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on blood pressure and particularly with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic and in particular why is blood pressure a risk factor uh, for more severe disease with COVID-19. Okay so the first thing to say is that one of the things that caused a lot of concern amongst patients, amongst people in general with the COVID-19 pandemic is that it has been found that certain groups of patients are considered significantly higher risk of getting the more severe and even fatal infection from the virus. Okay, when we study um, these patients, they're more likely to have uh, a, a higher prevalence of cardiovascular and respiratory disease. So when, you know, from China and Italy, what we find is that those people who had the worst form of the disease or who even died from the disease had a much higher prevalence of cardiovascular disease and respiratory disease. Physiologically, this would make complete sense because two of the fundamental requirements um, to preserve life is that oxygen needs to get in and out, you know, oxygen needs to get into the body and then you need uh, blood to come and pick that oxygen up and deliver it to the vital organs. So if there is a major pre-existing problem with the lungs with oxygen delivery, then that's clearly going to be a bad thing. And if you have a problem with the circulatory system, i.e. blood getting round and trying to pick up this oxygen, then that would be a bad thing. So if you have any kind of um, respiratory or circulatory problem, then of course that increases your risk from any illness. Okay. Uh, however, one of the things that really st uh, stuck out from the data is the fact is this um, association with high blood pressure. Uh, the studies from China and Italy have suggested that those people who died had a much higher prevalence of high blood pressure, uh, 30 to 50 percent in some studies um, of the patient who had the worst forms of illness had high blood pressure. On the basis of this, this observation, um, the recommendation has been that, oh, well, high blood pressure is a major risk factor for uh, the more severe form of disease and therefore people with high blood pressure should be considered particularly vulnerable. Okay, now this has caused a great deal of anxiety because high blood pressure is extremely common in the population and everyone is wondering, am I now at high risk? Okay, when I think about high blood pressure and its relationship to fatality in the COVID pandemic, it just doesn't make sense because to my mind, if you have high blood pressure and you have an infection, then the thing that will happen is that the blood pressure may go even higher. If the blood pressure is a causative, um, you know, if it causes more fatality in COVID, then the only way I can see it doing that in the acute setting is if the blood pressure goes up excessively high, in which case it would damage the um, uh, blood vessels, particularly in our brain, it would cause more brain bleeds, it would cause more strokes. But we don't see that in these patients. We don't see that in those patients who die from COVID. They generally die because of bad lungs. They die because they cannot get enough oxygen into their bodies. They don't die because they're getting major bleeds. And therefore, the blood pressure itself cannot be the thing that is contributing to death. So what is this? What is this association with high blood pressure? Why, why do people with high blood pressure seem to do badly in patients um, uh, with COVID? And so I thought I'd try and address that. The first thing, and I'm trying to address it in the way that I can understand it. Okay, so the first thing to say is that none of what I say should make anyone complacent about following uh, government advice regarding social isolation, social distancing, hand washing, because by far and away, the best thing you can do for yourself and for anyone else for, and for everyone else is not to get the virus in the first place. However, Let's just try and explore this connection with blood pressure a little bit more. OK, the first thing to ask yourself is what is high blood pressure? Is high blood pressure simply a set of numbers or is it actually more than that? Is it a process? OK, the way it's the world seems to define high blood pressure at the moment is by treating it purely as a number. 
If your blood pressure numbers are higher than a number set by a group of doctors and medical researchers sitting in a room somewhere, then you have high blood pressure. If your uh, blood pressure does not meet that level, then you don't have high blood pressure and no one is interested. Um, the, what is really even very, really interesting is that this group of people who sit in a room and decide what is the cutoff change their mind all the time and they will change the numbers, you know, so every year you'd see the numbers coming down. Um, I believe this to be a, a very amateurish approach which may work for populations but doesn't really work for individuals. The reason this is is because we are all different. For example, as we get older, our blood pressure will naturally go up. Um, if we are anxious, our blood pressure will go up. Uh, and therefore, if you just rely on the number and you use this comparator, this fixed comparator, then you may be erroneously diagnosed as or labeled as having high blood pressure because actually, you know, the, the, the number that these societies give us do not take into account your age, does not take into account what kind of environment you are in at that time, does not take into account how anxious you may be, it doesn't take into account your um, your physique, your ethnicity, etc. So the, the problem is that when you use a fixed number as a comparator, then you may erroneously be labeled as having high blood pressure. And I'm sure that happens all the time. I'm sure there are tons of people who are just anxious, who are just older, in whom the blood pressure numbers are a little bit high, but it probably would have been labeled as having high blood pressure, the disease, erroneously. To my mind, high blood pressure should not be defined as a number. To my mind, the definition of high blood pressure is that pressure which is doing that patient whose pressure it is some form of harm. Okay, If the numbers are not doing you any form of harm, if your blood pressure is not harming you in any way, even at a microscopic level, then that pressure is not high for you. That's what I believe. Um, so if you want to truly know if you have high blood pressure and rather than just relying on the numbers to my mind it makes sense to look for the process is that pressure high for you is it doing you some kind of damage if you look for that evidence of that damage then you are feel a lot more confident that actually that those numbers are truly high for you in terms of looking for the process how do you look for the process well what does blood pressure do blood pressure if it is truly high for you is it is all about pressure in a compartment so if the pressure in the compartment increases then the walls of the compartment or the compartment is in some way damaged so similarly if your blood pressure is high for you then what it will do is it will damage your blood vessels it will uh, make the tiniest most fragile blood vessels burst and you can look for evidence of that you can look at the tiny blood vessels in the eyes and you can see little hemorrhages in people who have truly high blood pressure similarly we have tiny tiny blood vessels in our kidneys and you can and if the kidney if these blood vessels in the kidneys start getting damaged then the kidneys don't do their job as well and more protein is leaked out into the urine and this is easy to measure in the urine so you can look for more protein in the urine you can look at the back of the eyes to see if the eyes have in some way been damaged um, if the if the pressure is truly high then the heart your heart has to work against that higher pressure and the heart becomes more muscular and you can look at the heart and see if it's more muscular. So this is called left ventricular hypertrophy. You can easily see it on an echocardiogram. If you don't have a more muscular heart, then it makes it unlikely that that pressure is high for you. Uh, in addition, you can obviously look for macroscopic damage. You know, these are microscopic things, but macroscopic damage if you've had a heart attack if you've had a stroke if you've had a bleed if you've had a if you've had any evidence of vascular damage then it is more likely that that pressure is high for you okay and to my mind if you don't have any evidence of that process going on and the only abnormality is the number then I can't see why you are exposed to more high, uh, exposed to a greater risk from your blood pressure. And therefore, if you're not exposed to a greater risk for your blood pressure, then clearly you don't have high blood pressure. Personally, that's what I think. Anyway, 
So if we look at the COVID population, what could be the possible explanations for, for, uh, between um, high blood pressure or this diagnosis of high blood pressure and more severe or fatal disease, okay? So the first thing to say is, pressure or high blood pressure could just be a confounder. What I mean by this is that the strongest association between COVID and death and COVID and more severe disease is age. As people grow older, their blood pressure numbers go up. Okay, this is just part and parcel of aging, but they are therefore more likely to be labeled as having high blood pressure because the cutoff that people set as high as as the value that, uh, you know, we call high uh, call blood pressure, the cutoff doesn't change according to age. So a person's normal blood pressure will go up as they get older. Once they get to that cutoff, oh, you've got high blood pressure. Actually, no, that's probably just their normal blood pressure, but they're getting older. But it is also true to say that people who are older are more likely also, some of them are more likely to have the process going on as well. So it is not surprising that older people have a much higher incidence of a diagnosis of high blood pressure. And it may not be that the blood pressure is the cause of the increased mortality. It is more likely that the patient is older and that is the more likely cause. It just happens to be older people have higher blood pressures. Okay, so that's the most likely reason to my mind. Another uh, thing to say is if you really have the process going on, it is generally a symptom of an unhealthy body. So true high blood pressure, blood pressure that is high for you generally keeps bad company. We often see people who have truly high blood pressure also to be diabetic. We also see them an association with obesity. We also see an uh, association with kidney disease. So all these additional risk factors act as additional risk factors for people with high blood pressure. So that's another thing to be aware of, that blood pressure is not generally is not on its own. It, it keeps bad company. So it's a group of things rather than just the blood pressure. Um, then there is another thing, which is to say that if you truly have the process going on, then the blood pressure is a sign of damage at a microscopic level. What I mean by this is that there's premature wear and tear in our blood vessels. And because there's premature wear and tear in our blood vessel, there is a degree of compromise with the blood getting to where it needs to get to. So if our uh, tiny blood vessels in our kidneys are worn and torn because of constant damage from um, this process, uh, then it's going to be more difficult for the blood to get through to the kidneys. Similarly with our brain, similarly with our heart. So if you then increase the demands as during a uh, infection with COVID where you get very high fever, you get very dehydrated, there's lack of oxygen, then you know, you're increasing the demand and unfortunately, because of this wear and tear, the supply is not going to be able to match the demand and the vital organs are not likely to get as much blood and they're more likely to start failing, which will then increase your risk of everything going wrong as a result of the infection. So that's another reason why people with high blood pressure probably do badly uh, when they get the infection, true high blood pressure that is. The next thing to say is that people who have high blood pressure tend to have more muscular hearts, okay, because the heart has to work against this higher pressure over a prolonged period of time, and therefore the heart becomes more muscular. When the heart becomes more muscular, it becomes stiffer. It contracts with great strength, but it cannot relax. It's like uh, becoming a bodybuilder, you know, where bodybuilders generally are very strong, but they tend to be less compliant. They tend to be a little bit more stiff than say a ballerina. Uh, and therefore, as, uh, as um, the heart is getting, as the heart is adapting to this higher pressure, it becomes more muscular. As it becomes more muscular, it becomes stiffer. What that means is it contracts well, but it doesn't relax as quickly. Because it doesn't relax as quickly, it doesn't fill with as much blood, okay? Now, when does it relax? It relaxes when our, it relaxes during a phase of the heart called diastole. When we, when we have an active infection going on, when our heart rates are going really fast to try and keep up with the body's increased demands, then we shorten the time for the heart to fill 
in diastole. So the heart is really stiff. It needs more time to fill with blood, but we're depriving it of that time. And therefore the heart doesn't fill with as much blood. Less blood comes out because less blood is coming out and you've got this damage to the kidney vessels, etc. Everything gets a little bit worse. And this is why um, high blood pressure could be contributing to um, a higher risk in patients with COVID. But I think that is true only in a subgroup of these patients who are diagnosed with high blood pressure, because I think a lot of patients are diagnosed with blood pressure just because their numbers are a little bit high, not because they have the process going on. But in those people who do have the process going on, those would be the reasons why um, the blood pressure exposes them to a higher risk. So in summary, as far as my knowledge of cardiology goes, I think if you've just got slightly high numbers which are requiring tablets, but no evidence of the process going on, then I don't think you're at substantially high risk. And therefore, I would like to reassure you with this regard. If, on the other hand, you do have evidence of the process going on, then yes, I do think that that makes you a higher risk candidate. And obviously, or everyone should do all that they can to try and avoid getting the virus in the first place. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I hope I haven't made it too complex. I would love to hear your thoughts. Once again, thank you so much for all that you do for me. This is a hard time for all of us. You know, I, I know everyone is very appreciative of uh, doctors, but I truly am completely overwhelmed by the kindness that people are demonstrating to all of us. You know, we're doing our job uh, and you're being very kind and supporting us and it makes us feel wonderful. Thank you so much. All the best.